Is cropping a necessary evil or just a fact of life? Either way, you almost always got to do it, whether to change the form factor, aspect ratio, or hone in on important details. But how? Up front inside Lightroom slash Camera Raw, or later down the line in Photoshop? You decide. What if all you want to do is crop? That's it. You just want to crop the image. Don't worry about the other stuff. Why then? It couldn't be more convenient than it is inside Camera Raw slash Lightroom. So just switch to the crop tool, which you can get by pressing the C key in both. And then you just drag the edges of the crop boundary like so. Now by default, the aspect ratio is locked down. So just click the lock button right there to unlock it so that we've got a free form boundary like so. And then when I get something I like, I could just switch back to the standard edit mode, which you get by pressing the E key. If I then decide, you know what? I don't like this junk over here on the side. It's distracting. I want to crop it out. Press the C key. You're back in business. You've got your crop boundary again. It's just sitting there waiting for you. And it's completely non-destructive. It's absolutely dynamic. And so great thing about Lightroom slash Camera Raw is it's all almost impossible to actually harm a pixel. Compare that to Photoshop where it's not just possible, it's probable. And so I'll switch over to the crop tool. Now for me, delete crop pixels is turned off. However, and that might be the case for you as well. However, it's not default behavior. If I right click on this little icon up here in the options bar and choose reset tool, default behavior is delete crop pixels on which is crazy. When they first introduced this feature, it was off by default, but then somewhere along the line, somebody decided, oh no, that should be on. Because after all, doesn't everybody want to permanently damage the image? It's a flat background. I just, I just got rid of those pixels permanently. I don't want that. I'll undo the change. Where's my crop boundary? Where is it? It's not there. It's not waiting for me the way it was inside of Camera Raw slash Lightroom. And so I can redraw it pretty quickly. I mean, I am working generally right here. I'm not being super careful, but still, I did have to do that work. And now you can midstream turn this off, which is great, and then press the Enter key. And now you have, as you can see, if I press the V key to switch to the Move tool, I've still got my entire layer. I just am seeing it inside of a cropped canvas. So I haven't harmed a single pixel. At which point you may say, okay, you can't, you can't be this hard on Photoshop. You just kind of approach it right. You got to be smart. Okay, how about this? Th the, that image we were just working on inside Camera Raw, that DNG files 21 megabytes. This thing now, having done nothing to it but cropped it, now that it's a layered image, even with maximized compatibility turned off, if you know what that is, this is 55 megabytes. This is two and a half times as large just to crop an image. Round one goes to Lightroom slash Camera Raw. And by the way, if you're enjoying this as well as these colorful images, then won't you take a moment to subscribe I think you'll be very glad you did. All right, now for round two, Generative Expand. Now this feature has not quite made it to Lightroom yet. It does exist inside Camera Raw as a technology preview. So you have to turn on this checkbox and restart the software. It's well worth it, however. And so let's say I decided I framed my Wonder Puss, that's what it's called, a little high. And so I wanna drag this down and I want more tentacle action. And so I need to turn on Enable Expand and then I can drag outward to reveal a bunch of transparency. And then I'll click on generate in order to invoke generative expand. And we have the three customary variations, by the way. I'll go with, I think I like variation two the best, let's say. But I want to show you something. I'll go ahead and grab the zoom tool and drag on in. And if you look very closely here, you can see that we have, well, it's pretty obvious, a mismatch between the original photographic detail over here on the left side of my cursor and the new detail over on the right hand side the resolution does not match and the detail doesn't match either and just totally oddly by the way notice this let's say i've got two more variations right i'm looking at two of three i switch back to the edit mode and then i switch back to the crop tool and my variations disappear you have to commit to one and only one variation. Compare that to Photoshop where things fare much better. I'll go ahead and switch to the crop tool, click inside the image right here, come on. 
And I'll drag this guy down, making sure, of course, that delete crop pixels is turned off. And I'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit, drag this edge down quite a bit, actually, and these guys outward so that I can generate many more tentacles. By clicking on Generative Expand, I can enter a prompt, but I don't have to. And then, once again, a moment later, I end up with my three variations. And so I think variation number two is going to serve the best. None of them are all that good, but still let's go ahead and zoom in and you can see that we have the same problem. We have a resolution mismatch right here. So good res over here on the left hand side and bad gummy stuff over in the right hand side. But here in the properties panel, I have this enhanced detail button. And so once I click on it, it is going to take a moment. It takes about 45 seconds to a full minute, but it does a bang up job. Look at that. It's not perfect but it's much much better and so i have to give generative expand round two to photoshop all right now for round three what's commonly known as post crop vignette it's really a dynamic vignetting feature that exists inside lightroom and camera raw and so check out this seahorse i was really pleased with this photograph because my dive masters in the background backlighting it but there's still so much kind of dust in the water this is backscatter is what it's known as. And I could spend the rest of my life trying to, you know, heal it away. Or I could go to my effects right here and watch. I know people put down vignettes all the time, but they're so great sometimes. If I take this vignette value down, notice that it does a real number on calming down some of this backscatter and adding drama to this scene. Now notice if I decide to switch to the crop tool once again by pressing the C key and let's go ahead and turn off the constraint right there and I'll drag this guy over and notice that the vignette is updating along with the crop. So if I decide I want this vignette to be closer to the seahorse, that is perfect. That's great. That's exactly what I would want. Whereas if I were to crop the image after applying the vignette here inside Photoshop, then I am not going to see the vignette move because Photoshop's basically completely unaware of that vignette, even if I were working with the smart object, by the way, it's not gonna see it. Hey, real quick, me, I'm just speaking for myself. I actually prefer one approach over the other. I'll let you know by the end of this video, but for now, staying objective. But hey, if you wanna see me further explore my preferred approach, then join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash now. And now back to camera raw slash Lightroom versus Photoshop cropping. And so, if a dynamic updating vignette is important to you, then round three goes to Lightroom slash Camera Raw. All right, now for round four, which is less of a battle between the technologies and more a few words of advice. If you plan on taking the image into Photoshop, don't crop it in advance. Do the cropping in Photoshop instead, because otherwise, it can just prove really confusing. Let me show you what I mean. So this guy is a robust ghost pipe fish. So a little guy, pretty rare as well. So I was very happy to get the shot, but I'd like to crop it tighter and I'm doing so here inside of camera raw. And I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this guy a little bit as well. And let's say I'm happy with that. Then the most flexible way to work if I'm gonna bring the image into Photoshop is to click down here on this open button and choose open as object. So I open the image as an editable smart object inside of Photoshop. You can tell it's a smart object because we're seeing this little page icon in the bottom right corner of the thumbnail here in a layers panel. And that tells you that you have the entire image embedded inside this file. However, if I switch to the crop tool and I decide to modify the crop, like I want to rotate it a little differently, notice that I'm missing all those cropped pixels. They actually got deleted in the translation from camera Raw over to Photoshop. Well, they're not really completely gone for good. What you have to do though, it's a little bit of a pain in the neck, but 
not panic. That's step one. And then step two is to double click on the thumbnail for this layer. And that's going to open it inside of Camera Raw. Even if you prepared it in Lightroom, this is the way it'll work. And then I would switch to the crop tool and I would click on that reset button in order to undo the crop here and then click OK. And that's going to restore the entire image inside of Photoshop. Now, it's not going to necessarily look like it at first, but what you can do now is you can click inside the image with the crop tool and you'll see now I have access to all those pixels and I can rotate the image a little more if I like to, taking care to make sure I'm not exposing any transparent areas in the corner. And then I could just go ahead and press the enter key in order to accept that change. And so clearly the winner of round four is Photoshop, by which I mean, if you're gonna open an image in Photoshop, you wanna crop it there as well. And for round five, we'll look at how the various technologies accommodate multiple images. Camera Raw and Lightroom allow you to edit multiple images at the same time whereas Photoshop allows you to combine them. And so in this case, I could press Control A, Command A on the Mac to select all these C slugs, new to Branks, if you prefer. And if I were so inclined, I could crop them all together as well. And even though any single crop that I apply is unlikely to accommodate all of them in exactly the same way, it might serve as a nice jumping off point. And so I might go ahead and drag each one of these guys to a slightly different location, including this creature right here that doesn't even look conceivably possible. And finally, this adorable guy right here. Meanwhile, in Photoshop by stark contrast, we have a diabolical mana shrimp. And as you can see, I do have multiple versions of the shrimp right here. So this is one version of the photograph in which this eye is in focus, but this one is not. And so then I grabbed this version in which this size in focus, but this one's way out of focus, as you can see here. And so I went ahead and masked it into place, and then I filled in the edges using the remove tool along with generative AI. And the great thing about this is sometimes you'll use this tool and you'll just burn through the credits because you'll click it different locations. I went ahead and painted one brush stroke around the entire thing. It's a resolution match and it cost me one credit. Totally great. And now I'm going to get rid of these bad edges by cropping the image with my preferred technique, the canvas size command. And so that way I can work numerically. So I'll just enter minus 200 for each one of these values here to subtract 200 pixels. Click OK, ignore the inaccurate alert message. And I end up with an image that I like so much. I'll go ahead and throw my signature on it. And so here's a case where there's no clear winner. It's just two technologies actually three different products, Lightroom, Camera Raw, and Photoshop, doing what they do best. Last time I examined cropping, a lot of you had a lot of opinions. I welcomed them then, and I welcome yours now. So let me know what you think, and then subscribe and turn on notifications. And for a fun examination of my preferred approach to cropping, which I will be honest, is generally inside Photoshop, join me at patreon.com slash deke now, and then go to deke.com and sign up for my entirely free newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan, this is Deke Now.